everybody, this is Gary Bay, Nerd Chuck, host of Wine Library TV, aka WLTV, and this is BBQ Central. Start the game! Let's go! We'll do it live. Do it live! I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live! So to get that perfect barbecue, you use wood. Are you sure it's safe? Whatever. We put the lighter fluid on, strike the match, and... Oh. Should we call the fire department? That might be a good idea. show that talks about barbecue and grilling type shenanigans and tomfoolery originating from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame city of Cleveland, Ohio, the barbecue capital of the North Coast. I am your program host, the Greg Rampy, happy to have you. It is a barbecue capital of the North Coast. We were down at... Edgewater Live last Thursday. And there were no less than four out of the 12 food trucks that were stationed there that uh, three of them were full-blown barbecue food trucks. And the other one had a number of barbecue items, although they're not traditionally a barbecue restaurant or known for being a barbecue restaurant or food truck. So it is a barbecue capital, and they were on the North Coast. Never was it more textbook on display than it was almost a week ago. So if you're in Cleveland, you're ever at Edgewater Live on a Thursday during the summer on special weeks. Live music. The beautiful people are out on the sandy beaches of Lake Erie. It's fun time. Not going to lie. All right. If you want to jump in on the show tonight, Here's how you do it. You can get in touch with the show by calling 216-220-0966. Email Greg at the BBQCentralShow.com. On the Twitter and Instagram, at BBQ Central Show. Everything else you want to find out about the show can be found at the main website, the BBQCentralShow.com. And here's what's happening. Coming up in about 12 minutes from now, he is a first Tuesday of the month guest. By the way, welcome to July if you're counting. Typically in the second interview segment of the first hour, usually it's Malcolm Reed, a YouTube sensation. And then we follow up one YouTube sensation with a second YouTube sensation. That, of course, being saying the cooking guy. Malcolm Reed is out for the duration of this week and next week. For my non-German speaking friends, that's and next week, by the way. So I had to do a little schedule reshuffling and realizing that I have gold in the palm of my hand on the short side of the segment in the first hour, I asked Sam if he would be more than willing to pull a additional segment. And he said, as long as I'm out by X time because we have dinner with friends, I'll do whatever you want. And that's why he is quickly becoming my all-time favorite install on the regular basis. So Sam, the cooking guy in the first hour, we have plenty to talk about. If you didn't know, July 4th is coming up day after next. If you didn't know in the live fire industry, that might be the single biggest barbecue and grilling day of the year. Labor Day is really big. Memorial Day is really big. Because on either side of those, that would signify either the beginning of a grill season or the end of a grill season, depending on how you look at it. But July 4th is like the Thanksgiving to live fire cookers. So we'll talk about recipes, things outside the box, traditional stuff too, like hot dogs, cocktails, all that good stuff. And who knows? I mean, best laid plans with Sam always lead to Hindenburg type conversation as we completely diverge off of whatever the outline was. But we'll see. We'll try and stay on task as much as possible. Plus, we do have a little bit extra length of time that we don't normally have. And if we go off track, everything is jammed up anyway. Second hour. 
You've been seeing it promoted on social media all over the place. One of the most recognizable faces in barbecue today and over the last handful of years. Big Mo Kason makes his triumphant return singularly to the show. Uh, Mo was on in conjunction with Bob Trudnack a handful of months ago. And Mo was like on some type of a fishing charter. There was a lot of commotion going on behind him. And there were various points in that interview that I was just going to hang up on Mo. And I didn't want to do that because I like Mo as a person, but as a guest on the show. And I was running the disrespect meter up and he didn't cross over it. But if it would have been any more, I would have had to catch and release Big Mo to keep it in with the fishing concept. So Mo is in by himself for the duration of the second hour. So if you want to call in and ask Mo a question, I'm sure he's happy to at least hear it. I don't know if he'll answer it, but whatever. 216-220-0966. Don't forget to follow me socially on Instagram and on Twitter at BBQ Central Show. And you can always follow me on Facebook slash BBQ Central Show as well. So it's safe to say that while the first hour of the show last week was well-received, certainly, Pat LaFrieda, Chris Hughes from Broken Arrow Ranch, one guest who's never been on this show before, another most recognizable butcher in the country who has been on the show a number of times before, quickly becoming a semi-recurring favorite, might be in the running for semi-recurring Hall of Fame. We'll see about that later in the year. The runaway favorite interview of the show, last week was with 17 year old angel todd you would recall she won the very first sca event in ohio two weeks ago that was held at hartville hardware i may have some news on hartville hardware coming up as time allows and i agree she was great she shared 99 percent of everything she did in her cook overcame a thermometer disaster probably felt some pretty good pressure competing against her dad as well as some other teams that were there and comes through it on top, and everyone, and uh, over everyone, and gets the golden ticket to Fort Worth for the World Championship. So great story. She is the future of competitive food sport. There's just not a lot of them that we're hearing about. I don't know if you knew that. So once again, thanks to Angel, her dad Keith, for doing the show. And allowing her to do the show. Yes, weirdos. I did get Angel's dad's permission before I contacted her to do the segment to make sure that everybody was on the same page and I wasn't some creep. Uh Dare we take bets? As a matter of fact, dare we take bets on Angel Todd winning the world title? I know Steve Ray is always down for taking some action. He's the Las Vegas of Ottawa, Tennessee. So if you have thoughts on that, drop them in the instant chat, and Steve will start making bookings as we speak. On a side note here, if you are interested in free barbecue books, And this has been the season of barbecue books, no doubt. A lot of people showing up on this show, pimping their books, whatever they are, electric smokers, pellet smokers, regular smokers, on the grills, you name it. Plant-based meat smoking. Plant-based smoking. If you want a free copy of Bill West's new barbecue book entitled Smoking Meat 101, Be the first to send me an email right now, and in the subject line, put smoking101. Send it to me right now. First one in wins. I will announce your name live right here on the internet airwaves. The book is a beginner's guide, but also has 75-plus recipes in it. So if you want a copy, you're a cheap ass, you think you win all the time, all that, don't hesitate right now. Shoot me an email, Greg at the BBQ Central Show.com. And in the subject line, put smoking 101. And then send it to me, and the first one in will win this book from Bill West called Smoking Meat 101. It's very, very fun. As a matter of fact, we have a winner right now. Here we go. We're going to the winning hotline. And believe it or not, Joe Martinez, winner. 
Joe did not mess around. He heard my direction. And bango, bongo, bada boom, bada book it. You just won that book, Joe. So now, Joe, send me another email. And in that subject line, put winner, and then in the body of the email, full name, address, telephone number, and I will forward that to Bill West's PR person. And they will be sending the book out to you directly. So I'm sure... I don't want to speak for you, Joe, but I'm sure there was an inner yearning that perhaps I have the copy of the book, that I might sign Bill West's book. I might autograph my name in Bill West's book. That's not going to happen. It's going to ship directly from the publisher. So I'm interested in your take on the book, and that's what it takes to win here on this show. Fast fingers. Anybody watch... Jason King's latest YouTube video. Go check it out. It's a winner. Bacon-wrapped salmon bites. I don't know if it's his latest one, but I saw it up on Twitter the other day, and I watched the whole thing from start to finish. He's got a future in that YouTube. He could step up his production game a little bit, but that's all right. Everybody can't be me and Steve Ray. Barbecue hunk, don't hate on the salmon bites. I think you might like it. Let me talk to you quickly about the barbecue guru. Believing that outdoor cooking should be easy because it can be, especially with a monolith guru edition grill. Remember this guy? Yeah, sure you do. It's the world's first temperature controlled smoker with a built-in power draft fan. By the way, a ceramic cooker. It means smarter control and greater freedom with automatic temperature control. Easily choose your cooking time and temperature and let the monolith do the work of a sous chef or a barbecue pit master with minimal effort. You now have oven-like precision at the grill. You can serve the tastiest, juiciest meals each and every time. So easy to do. If you already have a Barbecue Guru Pick Control device, you don't need to get anything new. You really don't. All you have to do is hook that controller right up to the fan that's built in, and you're off and running. Do you want to upgrade that tech? Sure. Why not? You can upgrade that tech. If you have any questions about what you want, make sure that you give them a call, 800-288-GURU. That's 800-288-GURU. Or shoot them an email at their website, bbqguru.com. We are back with Sam the Cooking Guy right after this. Stick around. We'll be right back. Broadcasting live from the Barbecue Central Show Studios in Cleveland, Ohio. You're listening to the Barbecue Central Show. Once again, here's your host, Greg Rempe. All right, welcome back. This portion of the show being brought to you by Butcher Barbecue, makers of award-winning injections, marinades, rubs, seasonings, barbecue sauces, grilling oils, all of Butcher Barbecue products tested on the competition circuit as well as in my backyard and many others worldwide. Be the pit master of your neighborhood. Visit butcherbbq.com to stock up now. Always trust your butcher. The first Tuesday of the month. Bringing a visit from our friend, our favorite ex-Canadian, Sam the Cooking Guy. Hey, Sam. And by the way, I, I still am Canadian. Uh, not really. Yeah, Canadian. I mean, I guess. All right, so I got to tell you, I mean, immediately yeah. I saw... Oh, are you leaving? You going for a run? No, I, left, I left my refrigerator open and, and it was... Uh... <laughs> the door started making that noise. Do you have? Right, do you have all, all is your refrigerator running? Oh, you should get it. It's going down the block. All right, better go and catch it. That just shows how old we are, bro. You Prince, well, you me. do you have Prince Albert in a can? <laughs> uh, I let him already suffocate. What What is Prince Albert exactly? I don't even know what the hell Prince Albert is. Yeah. It must be. A t- is it a tobacco? <laughs> I don't know. How about this one? I, just I, I remembered joke. with my mother and hers that she used when she was a kid. So we would call people up and they, she would say, are you the woman that does, does the washing? And the woman would say, I, I guess, yes, because if you wash, you know, whatever clothes in your house, she'd say, yes. And my mother would go, oh, you dirty thing and hang up. And I would say, what the hell does that mean? She goes, well, it was funny. I go, 
I, I uh, would debate you on that, but I still would like to know what it means. She couldn't come up with anything. Well, hey, sometimes the funniest jokes are the most inside, even if they're your own inside joke to yourself. I guess. Well, look, uh, let me do a tight shot on Sam the Cooking Guy here, because by the way, if you can't read, I apologize, but he's wearing Doug Shiding's Rogue Cooker t-shirt right there. Yeah, you wow. got that right. Look by the that. way, Man. I, I don't know if he sells them. Yeah. This is a darn good fitting t-shirt. I like it. Yeah, it's the Tri-Blend t-shirt. I'm, he doesn't sell them, but I mean, it's promotional stuff. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he um, was gracious enough to send me one. Oh. And um, I promised him I'd wear it. And I've been wearing it because, like, I wear t-shirts like 99.9% of the time. Yeah. But I don't like many t-shirts. I'm fussy about the way they fit. And I'm prepared to admit that. I know, look, it's a pretty manly audience. There's going to be guys going, oh, don't give a shit. I'll wear any piece of crap someone gives me. And that's fine. I don't want to wear any piece of crap, yeah. Jethro. So ease up. Let me just be sensitive with my clothing. You're right a little there. more discerning on your T-shirts. Or something like yeah. that. Yeah. I mean, you anyway, must like I that one because Doug, Doug made a good you don't wear the Barbecue Central Show shirt that I sent you. I mean, I've noticed that. It's the same material, my friend. When did I get that? I don't know, like last year when I sent it to you, but that's fine. You sure I got it? Did we yeah. talk about me oh, getting it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all right. That's not bore the audience. That's all right. So we- yeah, we no need to talk about that. Sam, I was watching a video, by the way. We got a lot to get to. I was watching a video of yours, and you purposefully put liquid smoke in a recipe? What? Oh. <laughs> Did I uh, did I happen to mention this is your last time on the show? Uh-oh. I mean, what are you doing? Uh, why, I mean, why liquid look, smoke? You made my point. You made my because, point in the as you're getting ready to add it. You're like, oh, you know, it, and you smelled it. You almost dry heaved. And you're like, oh, just add a, oh, just a little so much because it's like devil's urine. So I mean, why even put it in? I never said devil's urine. I, those are look, my words. I was making, for God's sakes, man. Can I talk? <laughs> <laughs> Thank All you right. for getting that. Go ahead. Thank you for getting that. That was way too insightful. Uh, I because did that shit in the oven, and I was just trying to say, look, if if you want to add a little bit, you could do this. Let me just skip to what we shot today that will be on tomorrow. Uh, I think Friday. Okay. I did um, beef beef ribs, short ribs, r- grilled. Mm-hmm. Um, that, by the way, is amazing. They are amazing. Now, um, and as I said in the beginning, there's a thinking that that before you do too much gesticulation with your hands, there's a general theory that says there's nails, and the only way to get them is a is a is a slow and low braise in the oven, or at like two fifty on your smoker for six and a half weeks. <laughs> Not true. They were definitely not as pull apart tender after about a half hour, 35 minutes, but they were every bit as delicious. They had a little extra chew. They were fat and meaty and they were outstanding. And I'm mentioning this because I, 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 I commented about an email that I'd gotten the other day. Somebody watched, we did a tomahawk on the smoker yep. and he goes, love the video. What can you suggest for people that don't have a smoker? And I said, well, short of saying buy one, uh, you could use one of those little smoke boxes that goes on your grill. Mm -hmm. And I said, but Mm -hmm. because I'm a good guy and not just a douche, I (laughs) went and bought one and here it is. And we're going to try it today. Nice. I'm telling you, (laughs) my shirt still smells like I've been uh, over a, a, you know, a giant uh, 24 hour cook for a a huge brisket. Mm. On a proper smoker. It the thing worked. I was really surprised. Now look, you probably will laugh. Oh, little boy, take that little, you know, toy of yours and go play in the sandbox. But for people, Greg, that don't have 75 P charcoal cooking equipment in their backyard and wood. Like you, like you, yep. uh, I think it's actually a pretty good option. All right. Um, so were these the beef ribs, so there's two different kinds. The, were these like the four bone rack, huge ones that you see in Texas? Yeah. Oh wow! Yeah. Oh, but I, I didn't do that. I, mean, I had the guy cut it down for me. I didn't want those. Yeah, yeah. 
I, they were about, they were about this big. Hmm. Hmm. All right. Well, I can't, that'll be up Friday. Try. All right. Well, I'm very yeah, excited. Marinade a couple hours in the, in the fridge, take them out a half an hour, then throw them on and babysit them a little bit. You know, we cooked them on the hot side till they looked really beautiful and then threw them over on the cold side or the not hot side. Mm-hmm. And, uh, let them finish there. They got about 130 and they were freaking amazing. Oh right. my God. Oh my God. As oh. they would say in Minnesota. Oh my God. Okay. Now, uh, oh the other God. thing I think, was this the same, uh, this was probably the hot dog video. I think, mm, no, there was something you used recently, uh, mayo and you, what the hell were you making with it? It was some kind of like a topping sauce. Maybe it was a burger thing that you were doing when you were recreating the McDonald's stuff. It, I'm getting way off top. Uh, yeah. So, from very uh, from time to time, but there's large gaps of the time to time. We've talked about mayonnaise on this show. You see. Uh, so, uh, in order to keep with my complete snobbery that I have laid out to you already this evening, while we would never <laughs> use liquid smoke, we would never use Miracle Whip ever, ever. Always mayonnaise. Now. Where I need you to re-explain, I think you did this about 10 years ago, if you can believe it or not, but we yeah. then had talked about this thing called QP Mayo, and you did it all. The, you used it all the time when you are doing the same live cast, and you broke it back yeah. out in package so people could actually see it in this particular video. But uh, from the, exactly what I did. Do you have some? Like, you want me to do uh, that now? Do you have some right now that you can? All right. Stand by, stand by. Give me, give me 10. 10 seconds. All right, Sam the cooking guy is... Heading out to grab his. Oh, you're about. Oh, look at this. It's almost like we had it set up, but you just must have these laying around. All right. So tell me all I about QP Mayo hey, and why I it's good. I always have three or four of these. So, Japanese mayonnaise. Uh, look, if you're a mayonnaise fan, I would argue that the shit is near life changing. It's very different. It's hmm. very different. There's more um, egg. I mean, there's more yolk, I think. Maybe a touch like a, a rice vinegar. The texture is completely different. It's more like um, uh, like like hand cream, and then it's really soft. When uh, what are you a Best Foods guy? Uh, I don't know what Best Foods is, but uh, we have Giant Eagle for. Oh, uh, um, uh, oh you mean uh, from a a, I mean, a, ma- a, a mayo, mayo standpoint? Uh, it's either Hellman's or Duke's. Okay, I don't know what Dukes is, but 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 if you put some of this uh, side by side with your Dukes, or you'll see like little air pockets in the Hellman's, yes. in, the, in the the Western mayonnaise. Right. This is so smooth you can't believe it. But the flavor, you have to really do the taste test thing. Mm-hmm. And I keep them. I I keep small ones. I'm out now, like this size. Uh, because whenever I do like some kind of event at my house where I've got people over and I use it for something, I used it last night for, uh, the Captain Crunch seared tuna and this prominently in it. People always say, well, like, what's the difference? And then I show them and they taste it and it's over at that point. Oh. Just to tell you how popular it's become. And I like to believe we had a little something to do with this. It's now sold at Costco. Uh, That's all a over big the, deal. like all over the place, Costco. Cause I got one that I just joined because of their prime meat selection. Their meat is great by the way. Oh, it's, uh, it's insanely good. Great. It's, it's insanely good. Yeah. People go, where do you get your meat? And I go, Costco. Yeah. They go, really? I go, where do you get your meat? Because th- the day of a lot of butchers <laughs> being around is maybe coming, but it's not here yet. And the people that say to me, what, you get your meat at Costco, I know what they're doing. They're going to like a shitty supermarket and getting crap that who knows what it is. The guy behind the counter half of the time doesn't even know what it is. Yeah, that's a true story. So, so yes, Costco's caring. And a viewer sent in a, a picture of a pallet of it. Hmm. Well, and I didn't know which one it was from. Right, so but. I'm probably going to have to go to costco tomorrow anyway to grab some items for thursday's events which we'll get into here in a moment you, but yeah yeah uh but so i'm gonna look for qp mayo in cleveland ohio and see if it if it is there i will snap photogs and shoot them over your way to know that you are infecting Dude, the rest of the country so 
uh, please, my fingers are crossed. Um, and, and this is something yeah. you would use uh, all the time. Uh, deviled eggs on top of hamburgers as a topping, uh, dip French fries, you it name makes, it. It makes everything better. Mm. Everything. More richness, more depth of flavor, things of this nature. Absolutely. 100%. Hmm. And and, and uh, the Japanese mayonnaise, QP. So just know there's a couple, there's two different types. And this one is QP by name. And this little creepy QP doll <laughs> likeness on it is also imprinted on the bottle when you take it. And the first time I bought it, it's a it's a plastic squeeze bottle. And and it's in this bag. And, and for me, I was like, Kind of weird in a squeeze bottle. Can that right? Yeah, right. I mean, is it still good on the shelf? Like, how is plastic any different with a lid than glass? Right. It's no different. No different. It's all about Same air getting all. in. Yeah. And if uh, so, all. if you don't have Costco, you get it on Amazon, or you have yeah, to go Amazon. Yeah, absolutely Amazon it. Yeah, all right. yeah. All right. Like, I think it's worth trying once, and I would argue that most people, most people, are going to say, "Oh, dude, that that stops the shit." And I know you did the the rant about uh, about uh, Miracle Whip, but you have to know there's people watching right now that that's their thing. Well, they're wrong, and I'm, I'm okay I'm sorry. with it. I don't hate Miracle Whip at I do. all. It's, the, it's it's a very it's, different flavor. It's totally profile. gross. It's totally gross. There's no need for well, it. It's outrageous. You know, I have a friend who couldn't couldn't get near a bottle of mayonnaise, no matter what kind it was. Hmm. She's a she's a, a mayo hater. So you're a you're a you know a miracle whip hater, and yeah. it is what it is. All right. There's a good poll for you to do. You could do that right now. Somehow I can't, but you could say, say miracle it. whip, yay or nay. All right, miracle whip, yay or nay in the instant chat. Start putting up yes or no, and then I'll quickly tally as we continue to talk. The other thing Let's that I wanted out, look, to, I, I'm just saying, there's gonna there's gonna. I think the majority will be mayo. will be nay. Especially because, you know, they're fans of you. They want to make you happy. How dare you? So don't these make people want to happy. Don't these, make Craig happy. These people want to honest. tear me down any chance they get. I mean, there's no Oops. nobody's going to try and make me happy. I guarantee it. Uh, all right. So let's uh, as the answers start to trickle in here, we'll come back to it yep. here in a second. But uh, yeah, the yeah. other thing that I wanted to ask you about, and this is as much as grilling oils have changed my life from Butcher's Barbecue. That was the read that I did prior to you just coming on. The other thing. That I'm, you know, using all the time now, and you introduced it to me maybe a year, maybe it's even a little longer than that. And in your videos, you call it neutral oil, and your favorite yeah, is avocado. Do. But uh, so, talk to me a little bit about the term neutral oil, and then why specifically avocado for you. And it's great. So, okay, so neutral oil simply means a non-flavored oil. Olive oil has flavor. Extra virgin and regular level. It definitely has a flavor. Sesame oil, basil oil, obviously those have flavors. When I say neutral oil, I'm talking about like if you're going to, if you want to put a little oil on the outside of a filet before you put salt and pepper or garlic powder, whatever you want on it before it goes on the grill, I say you use the oil that has A, the cleanest taste and B, more importantly, the highest smoke point. When oil burns and it starts to smoke, it gives off a bad, rancid kind of flavor. Olive oil smokes at somewhere around 300. For virgin olive oil, less than that. And avocado oil is at 500 degrees. Yeah. So if you're going to be doing any kind of high heat cooking, uh, you should be thinking for sure about an oil that smokes at a higher point. And avocado oil is not, is not just sort of flavorless, but what you get is a clean flavor. It smokes at the higher point, and it's, a, it's good fat. It's healthy. Canola is some weird chemically engineered shit from Canada. You don't trust those fuckers ever. <laughs> They're very polite, but don't trust that oil. I don't like that. Vegetable oil that's going to break down for sure really early. Yeah. And and you don't, you know, look, I'm a fan of stir frying. Um, I have in a wok grill pan, holes in it that uh, is fantastic. Then I get super hot on my grill. I toss vegetables in avocado oil and then season them a bit. 
and I cook them on that thing outside while I've got steaks or chicken or whatever else going beside it, but I don't want the stuff to burn. So I use the avocado oil. I use avocado oil 90% of the time. I use regular olive oil for making salad dressings. Um, and I use extra virgin olive oil only for finishing. Hmm. Like one of my favorite steaks is a filet with crumbled blue cheese and a couple good drizzles of uh, like a very good extra virgin olive oil. And a very good extra virgin olive oil is just the one that I like. It's a very personal thing. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking for uh, a good all-purpose oil, 100% hot oil is the way to go. If you're looking for a great extra virgin olive oil, you need to go try them because what I like might not be what you like. Yeah, it's like a wine almost. And it's like wine. And risking all the jokes that you want to make uh, I prefer a, an extra virgin olive oil with a fruity finish mm -hmm. as opposed to a bitter finish. I don't like the bitter olive oils. No, so me neither. Say what yeah. you want. I, I, like, uh, I like fruity finish on uh, extra virgin as well. All right. Uh, here we go. Quick mm -hmm. feedback here on the Miracle Whip and mayonnaise. Uh, so no's mean that they are against Miracle Whip. <clears throat> here we go. That's that's how I took this. Yes. Rogue cookers. Tell negative. me what's the, how many do, how many total do you have so far? I'm, I'm just going to read them off. It's probably like ten or something. So just a, a oh. small smattering. Uh, Row cookers negative. Dennis Busso nah. Barbecue food for you. Haven't had whip in years. Uh, guy the cooking. That Sam. was not a no, by the way. Yeah, guy the cooking. Sam, yay, especially on tomato sandwiches. Huckleberry barbecue. I, it's good, but right. mayo is better. Lance Owen, yay. Uh, Yins love barbecue. Good. Nay, backyard barbecue show uh, is telling us to try peanut. All right, so uh, we had mostly no, but we had a smattering of Miracle Whip lovers, and they okay. know who, who said who. Who said sorry? what? Go ahead. Who said the tomato sandwiches? Uh, guy, the cooking Sam. Okay, let me let me just speak to Guy, the cooking Sam, and the rest of the audience <laughs> for a second. <laughs> I lived in a building in, in Vancouver, British Columbia. The first place I moved out to, uh, about two weeks after my father came home and said, your mother and I have decided it's time for you to move out. I don't know. I was 18 or 19. And I said, Sweet. I can't really afford it yet. And he goes, we're going to help you find a place. <laughs> he wanted me the F out of the house. Yeah. So I lived in this, uh, about a 20 story building and two floors above me was a very Scottish kid named Kevin McDermott. Mm. And, ah. and Kevin McDermott would Kevin. make this thing. That was a, it was a, 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 a tomato and potato chip sandwich. Yes. So white bread, white bread. is the key. Yes. I still maintain white yes. bread's the key. Uh, 100%. And then he would use something called Heinz salad cream <laughs> that, that's a British uh, uh, thing. That we have in Canada. So this is, of course, back in Canada. Yep. Uh, and then there would be thinly sliced um, tomatoes, ripe, of course. Yep. Kosher salt, lots of fresh ground pepper, yes. and a handful of potato chips on top. And then the other piece of white bread, a little more salad cream. Yep. Put on top, you'd squish it down, you'd cut it in half, and you'd eat it. And I'm telling you, it's one of the greatest things ever. Yes. I think I put it in my first cookbook. It's definitely on my website. But when you can't find Heinz salad cream... Guy the Cooking Sam is 100% right. Miracle Whip is a perfect substitute for it. Mm, it's because it's uh, similar in flavor? It has that tang. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So I just think, I think you and your naysayers need to not imagine, not expect Miracle Whip to taste like regular mayonnaise. I don't. It doesn't at all. It's completely different, but it has its place, Greg. No. Um, it has its place. I eat the same And by same... the way, one of those places, one of those places, <laughs> listen to me now, is brushed on just grilled corn off the, off the, uh, the barbecue. Mm. It's going to add flavor. Yeah, I just don't. Not... I, I, I've, I've had it a number of times. My dad's brother was really into it, and it's not good. I mean, it's just, uh, I, you know, I... Can I get away with saying I want to like it, but it's just like it tastes like crap, so I'm not going to like it? 
That's, that's fine. Right? Can right. I just go back for a second? Did I hear Doug Scheiding say he didn't like it? That's right. Oh, now, uh, that's the last time oh, I'll be okay. wearing this crappy shirt. Yo, no, wait until we start talking about the 4th of July menu. You'll probably burn it as we are talking here on the oh, show. So uh, stand by. Give me one second here, and we'll come right back. I'm going to do a little uh, business, as they say, and talk to the fans of the show about Big Papa Smokers. Kind of in uh, Sam's neck of the woods, actually. Uh, Big Papa Smokers, the one-stop online shop for all things barbecue. Their curated selection of only the best outdoor cooking and grilling supplies. Get you on the path to better barbecue results in no time. They have 13 perfectly balanced rubs and uh, rubs and seasonings. They don't disappoint. Pick up a bottle today, BigPapaSmokers.com. Look to improve the flavor of your competition barbecue recipes. You know they have that great partnership with Simply Marvelous Barbecue to form. That West Coast offense, they also own Granny's Barbecue Sauce. So if you're looking for a new go-to sauce that everyone will love, Granny's Barbecue Sauce, the one you might want to try. And aside from those rubs and sauces, they also offer a great selection of pellet charcoal and wood cookers. If you're looking for a versatile smoker that's easy to use, check out the Mac 2 Star General Pellet Grill. Big Papa Smokers, the exclusive Mac dealer, even offers special packages. If you're a backyard barbecue enthusiast looking for a durable and versatile grill, you might want to try the Old Hickory Ace BP, the only charcoal smoker the Big Papa trusts on his competition trailer. Here's what you do. Go to the website, bigpapasmokers.com, peruse what they have. If you have any questions, give them a shout at 877-828-0727. That's 877-828-0727. Or shop the website, bigpapasmokers.com. That's bigpapasmokers.com. Dot com, Sam the Cooking Guy, and more 4th of July talk coming up. Stick around. Be right back. Continuing to produce incredibly mediocre content in an exceptionally professional way. You're listening and watching the Barbecue Central Show. Once again, here's your host, Greg Rampey. Okay, we are back talking with Sam, the cooking guy. Appreciate you hanging with me through the break there, Sam. Oh. Uh, Always happy. So as we talked about... By the about, way, I, yeah. I like, what I like most about what we do yes. is how we start with a topic, <laughs> but we never end anywhere near that, and we cover an awful lot of territory in between, and that I really dig. Yeah, all right. Well, uh, now I'm going to try and maintain some type of outline adherence okay, because we do have a huge holiday coming up in a couple days but uh, and, and that does lead nicely into you potentially burning the shirt so uh, from a fourth of july menu standpoint yeah 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 uh what is traditional for you and what might be outside the box for you coming up in the next couple days here's the deal traditional for me is not never really kind of do the same thing um I tend to be a creature of habit in in that things that I have made recently on the YouTube channel are things that I'm quite likely to make. Mm-hmm. For example, we did a um, we did a whole tenderloin, and I find when I'm entertaining, whole tenderloin is really the way to go. Mm. I, I don't know anybody that doesn't like the cut. I know, look, a lot of people love a love a ribeye. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And if it's a mostly male audience, you know, big fat Tom, whatever, everybody likes that. But, but, but a tenderloin, you can't, you can never get mad at that. And there's so many things you can do with it. You know, you can make a whole bunch of sauces. I love to smoke it. I think, I think a tenderloin loves the smoker and it comes off after, you know, whatever, like a one, like one of these guys after about an hour or so looking gorgeous, it's picked up that that sort of deep red hue. It's got the smoke. It's, it's, it's just waiting to be turned into a jillion things sliced on top of a salad, uh, su- sliced super thin and piled on like a Hawaiian bowl that you've, yeah. you've, uh, you've done on the grill with some sauce or slaw that you've made. I mean, there's so many things that you can do with it. So I like to do that. Recently we made, um, like, state fair fry bread and i know people kind of get weirded out when it comes to oil and stuff but you remember the Indian fry bread thing that which is not politically correct anymore it's now navajo or 
you know, we struggled with what to call it. Uh, what what American, is- Native American uh, fry bread, that kind of thing. Um, you make a simple doughy batter. Yeah. You deep fry it. You take it out. And then you put all manner of everything on top of it. You can do sweet ones for dessert with like cinnamon sugar or or powdered sugar or honey, which are great. We did that. Mm. But one that was my favorite, I put refried beans, Mexican rice, and then quickly sauteed shrimp on top. Mm. And I think that I like giving company choices. So like I said with the whole filet, you make it, but then you've got a few options for how they can eat it along with a few sauces. You make the fry bread. If somebody wants to make dessert out of it, they make dessert out of it. Somebody wants to make it a meal by putting you refried beans or salad and, and thinly sliced filet on it, you, you can do that. I, I like that. And then, of course, you cannot go wrong with, with dogs. And everybody's got their favorite, so I'm not even going to try and mention what I like so it won't make any difference. But you well, talk about your preparation. Dogs I mean, make- like if you're going to make hot dogs, like, well, oh, by the way, this yeah. is what I wanted to get to. Uh, your pal's uh, yeah. shirt there, Doug Scheiding. Recorded fact on this show that I can always go back to if he ever decided to try and deny it, said categorically that hot dogs will never, ever, and I mean ever, touch a grill grate on a grill that he owns. Never. He will never put a hot dog. He will never cook a hot dog. He doesn't believe in them. He is, hot dog is to him as uh, what liquid smoke is to me. If you can believe it. Stand by. Yeah. Stand by. All right. Hold on. Standing by. Oh, dear. Who knows what's going on? There we go. Now we're talking. Shirts off. Shirts off. Oh, it's on. It, no, it's on inside out. Yeah, yeah. What the hell is he talking about? Not only that, Sam, but if you were throwing a party, let's say Sam is not really with the hot dog scene, but you friends come over and they have some kids. Kids love hot dogs. And they're like, "Hey, on, Mr. Please, Zion, will you please, please throw some hot dogs on the?" He says he throws up the Heisman. Says no, kids. Not only do I hate hot dogs, I hate kids. Uh-oh. Now get out of here with your hot dogs. Can you believe it? No hot uh, dog. No, I mean, what, he's like the he's like that grumpy neighbor that everybody has and hates. Right. Get off my lawn, you kids. Yes, I'm not going to put those hot dogs you on my up. grill grates. It's unbelievable. So that's uh, why. Yeah. What's what's it, what's it going to do? He says they're flavorless. There's no reason Look, for the, them, a, and the only part reason. Of my language. Yes, go ahead. A dog could take a shit on his grill grates, and just crank the heat, shut the lid. And in half an hour, it's gone. Right. You ever heard of a brush? Hey, uh, it's, uh, I guess it's That's whoever's the cooker. You know what? This is, look, this Canadian is calling him un American. Oh, oh, geez. Uh-oh. Now we got to, plus, plus he's from Texas and they think they're Uh-oh. the most American. You know, Texas wants Uh-oh. to secede from the rest of the country. Sam, it's outrageous. Uh, well, with him, they should. Yes. Go away. See how long you guys last. That's right, Doug. With that kind of attitude. Beat it if you're going to have your anti-hot dog. I mean, come on. All right, so. So for people that are proper Americans and yeah. love this country. Everybody but Doug, you mean? Uh, everybody but Doug. Yes. I like to take my hot dogs like we did in a recent episode, and I make <laughs> little slits down the side, down two or three sides of it. I know they're round. You don't really need to do four sides. Two sides is enough. But like a quarter of an inch apart. Mm-hmm. Cut in just a little bit. And then I throw them in a little pot of boiling water till the slits open up, and that's maybe five, six minutes. Are you down what? with uh, with the slot dog what? thing? You like Is that a gimmick or no reason for that? What, what is that? Wait, maybe I don't know by that name. Uh, well, the, the product name is Slot Dog, and then it's got, you know, like crosshatch little knives, and you just press it down on one side of the hot dog, flip it over, press it down oh. again, and, you know, it's like instead of yeah. having to do the knifing yourself, it's very I have quick. a knife. I don't need to buy that stupid thing. Yeah, okay. I mean, they're a sponsor. No, I, you know somebody's got one. We, we, look, we all fall prey to that every now and then. Yeah, all right. So but you so like to cut it open. In water, to, five, six minutes. Right. They're, look, they're already cooked. The water just helps plump them up a bit yep. uh, and, and makes those little crevices that you've created open up, right? Mm-hmm. Then you still have to finish it. You're not done because then you need to make it crispy. 
And that's where those little cuts really come into play. And they're best on some kind of flat top. So you can roll them back and forth as they're cooking. And the crevices, the edges of the crevices get color. They look amazing, amazing. And then if you care about your company, Doug, then you have maybe different buns. Maybe you have different toppings. You have a shit ton of sauteed onions. You've got peppers for them. You've got all kinds of cheeses. You just do everything because it's about making people happy, mm. Doug. Mm. Hmm. What so, a concept. Um, Doug's argument, of course, is that uh, you know y- you have all of this stuff because there is inherently no taste to the hot dog. Do you agree or disagree? No, I don't agree at all. Mm. Not even close. No. A hot dog tastes like a hot dog. Like mayonnaise tastes like mayonnaise. Like, like, like clarified butter has its taste. It's got. To, look, you could take people, blindfold them, and give them a little one inch bite of a piece of hot dog, so they couldn't like hold it in their hand and know how long it was and what it was. Yeah. Open your mouth blindfolded, eat this. Tell me what it was. I'd say eight out of ten for sure gonna go. That's a hot dog. Yeah. And you know why? Because it. it- it's like a hot dog. It's like a hot dog, right? We're talking with Sam, wow. the cooking guy here. Thecookingguy.com is website, by the way. Uh, if you are going to be in town, like uh, Terry Ty Singer is going to be in San Diego this coming weekend, he's going to be going to Not Not Tacos. Believe it. Not or Not Not Tacos. Thank you. Terry. You're going to be. Uh, you're going to be around the parts there over the weekend, or what? Absolutely. I, mean, yeah. I don't know when Terry's coming, but yeah. yes, I'm there a lot. All right. Well, and if I'm not there when he walks in, if he finds a manager. Uh, and says, hey, do you know, it, Sam said you could ask him and see if he's around. Yeah. And I will come to him. And and I maybe can. he would also want to drop Barbecue Central to make it even more credible. Yes. Yeah. Because that will be meaningful to the managers in the in the, in the the restaurant. Right, of course. Any manager in the food hall. Keyword. He's going to go into Little Italy food hall. There's six restaurants. <laughs> Just say, who is there a food hall manager if he doesn't see me? And they'd say, Sam said... And Sam and Greg from Barbecue Central said, I could ask, maybe you could text him and see if he's available. He could come see me. Yeah. Take a little picture. And I, sign I, an I autograph. could wear my row cooker shirt inside out. Yeah. Even better. Or just shirtless. Why not? That's really no, rogue. Sure that. Rogue shirt. You see? Rogue shirt. Uh, what, <laughs> other, what other menus for 4th of July uh, or menu items for 4th of July you, you went to? Uh, look, I, I mean, you, you're never going to go wrong with ribs. Ever, ever, ever. All right. And I love them. I know everybody's got a way to make sure. them. Sure. You can slow do them on the smoker. You, you know, I do mine in the oven first for an hour and a quarter, uh, covered in foil with a little white vinegar. And then I take them out, and then I finish them on my grill or my egg. That's when the sauce goes on. They don't need any sauce in the oven. They're almost fall apart, not quite. They're really delicious. And then again, that's another. You could do a whole poll on that. Is is literally pulling out the bone too much? Because I know all the competition guys are like, eh, "That's not cool. We can't have that." Well, I, I don't think, think you it, would win any competition no, if you could pull the bone but, right but out. But who's right? looking to win any competitions in the backyard? I think you're but, cooking to your crowd or right, you know, right. whoever. This is about making your, your family and your friends happy. Right. Um, I, That's all that matters. I meant to Doug? ask you this last time. Yeah, Doug, are your ears on? You got corn cobs in your ear, son? All right. Uh, talk. Oh, to, right. Speaking of corn cobs, street corn, elote. <laughs> Talk to me about elote and why we love it and how I had right. no idea about it until last summer. Shame on me. Like Mexican grilled corn is just one of those great things. It's called elote. elote. You, you can have it on the cob and have it off the cob. But it really consists of, of taking an ear of corn. I, I brush it with a little uh, 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 neutral oil, as you like to say. A little kosher salt and pepper. And then it goes on the grill. If you've got like a half an hour, it takes that much to get it softened where it's really nice. Half an hour. And color. I wrap the corn, the, the cobs after I pulled off all the husk shit. I wrap them in saran. I put in the microwave for five minutes. Mm. And then they're soft. And then they get where you want them on the grill in about 10, 15 minutes. All right. You save time. 
But the magic happens when it's done. You've got some black little kernels. I'd say half of them are color on them, golden or black or whatever. It's soft to the touch. You just want to bite it, but resist a, a little bit more kosher salt. Oh. And then mayonnaise, Japanese mayonnaise, QP, mm -hmm. Hellman's mayonnaise, Duke's, Dukes. Miracle Whip for, for our, our, our three friends that are listening. George the Cooking Sam? George the Cooking... Guy the Cooking Sam. Guy the Cooking Sam. <laughs> you put on what you want. And then I, I like uh, maybe a little um, chipotle chili powder. You have to be careful because it's pretty spicy. You could do cumin. You could do any garlic powder, anything you want. Um, and uh, a squeeze of lime juice, and then you eat it. What about uh, uh, that uh, quijota cheese? Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I forgot, yes. The cojita cheese, which is that crumbly, it's feta-like, Mexican yes. feta-like cheese Love it. that you could use. Forget, you You know, you would crumble that over the top. Thanks for reminding me. <laughs> or Parmesan, if you don't have it, and Parmesan is a very good substitute, mm. as is crumbled feta on top of it. Mm. But it's really it's really good. It's really good. Corn on the grill is, is unlike... Uh, um, corn in the pot what is boiled boiled yeah that is that is mrs cooking guy's favorite thing elote she she loves it she doesn't know she doesn't love the elote because she uh -oh. doesn't like mayonnaise to be oh, eaten she like likes that. boiled she likes boiled corn is there a better term for it because that sounds bad no that's how it is it boiled corn is yeah. that what you call it kelly boiled corn it's gotta when you be you want corn what do you say to it? boiled she, yeah Oh, she calls it shit corn. Just, yeah, just do it. Just have, cook I the corn. Shorthand. Yeah, you just cook the corn have, because there's no other way you would do it. It's either going to go on the grill and you would call it grilled corn or elote. Otherwise, no, it's I know make the she, corn. When, when, she, when she says corn, I know what she wants. Yeah. I understand her shorthand. She says jump and I say how high. Right. She says corn. Right. And I get a pot of water going with some kosher salt Very in it. Very quickly. Nice right. uh, but that's you'll also I, crush hot Cheetos on street corn. You'll make like an Italian street corn. You'll go the extra mile, though. Red, white, and blue the, the, street the, corn. Go, I say go watch the, go watch the, 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 the street corn episode on yeah. YouTube. The Italian street corn, the corn comes off. It gets pesto on it and then some parmesan cheese i'm telling you it's freaking ridiculous it is ridiculous mm. and wait as it's finishing you're brushing the pesto pesto caramelizes a bit and kind of burns in it is so freaking good mm. Mm. i know it's crazy but just do it go watch the rest watch the video go watch the elote video it. the cooking guy on youtube yeah. last question yeah. before i let you go go ahead go ahead so is it about Doug? You no, we're done with Doug. Uh, forever. We're we done with Doug forever. We've divorced Doug. I hate to say it, but Doug was the longest running embedded correspondent of my show. He's summarily been fired. I hate to say it. Doug, you're just finding out about it on the air, but you're fired. Uh you know Here's what, let's send people to his house to tie him down <laughs> with ropes. Everybody and do then, not go to Doug's like, house. Like, do not tie him down. Hot dogs on his grates. <laughs> And watch those hot dogs just burn into those grates. Infect his grates. Those wieners are infectious. <laughs> I hey, feel wait, bad. He's what? a really nice guy. Yeah, it's a good shirt. And, yeah. but he's he's he fooled everybody. It. He's fooled everybody. All right. So you watch what's happening as far as cooking videos, what people are watching and liking, consuming. You've seen this rise in on-demand videos for yes. lessons that you pay for. For instance, Masterclass is a hugely successful thing. There's one that's just now coming out for barbecue. Is that something that you would entertain, like Sam the Cooking no. Guy? Oh, doing it? Uh, no. Great classes that no. somebody our would content, pay for? Our content has been free forever. It will continue to be free. I think there's enough people on, on YouTube, the internet, wherever, that are putting out great content that you can learn stuff from that you don't need to pay for. Would you ever spend money on a, mean, on a master class video? No, I never would. Never. What, what do I, what, if I need to know how to do something, I honestly, Greg, 
I have never in any topic, not just food, I have never once said, oh, let me look that up on the internet and not found an answer for it. Hmm. Are we, is everybody okay over Sorry. there, by the way? Apparently half of San Diego is going down. All right. Uh, <laughs> I've never been able to, I've, that's a good game. Stump the internet. Hmm. What could it be? You, you want to look up um, how to cook a, a hot dog standing on one leg on the top of a 38-story building. It's probably there. I mean, it's crazy. Everything is there. Does it speak to these these pay ones? But does it speak to the insatiable desire of people wanting to a learn, but b really master something a lot quicker than it would on their own otherwise? Am I saying? Am I asking that right? No, I think you're you're asking that right. I'm just saying. Um, uh. Uh. What's Franklin's first name? Aaron Franklin. Aaron Franklin has does this master class thing. Yeah. Right? I've seen it. I think you can pay for 90 bucks. For that. I came across a video the other day. He did a brisket. I don't know how much and it was free. I don't know how much more information he could have given you in the paid version. I mean, it looked like he was telling you most everything. How to choose it? How to how to trim it? That he's a fan of the salt and pepper Texas style. He doesn't yep, really right, do right. anything else. Right. He talked about the crutch. He talked about this. When to wrap? How to wrap? When to tell? How to do it? How to cut it? How thick? How to deal with the point? And Everything. The, the flat. And I mean, there was almost nothing left. If it was a strip show, uh, uh, he would have been down to nothing except maybe a postage stamp on his belly button. Yeah. So everything's you get out. what I'm saying? I got it. Yeah. Well, so what else is he going to say? I don't know. Here, like everybody, lean in close. Here's the one thing I don't on the free video. <laughs> I, I don't know. Maybe maybe there's some of that. I have no idea. Somebody's got to go pay and find out. It's a good experience. Right, we'll a check. Good experiment. We will check it out. Uh, Thursday is yeah. July 4th. You have been given recipes to try by this guy who shows up on the first Tuesday of the month, Sam Zion, yeah. better known as Sam the Cooking Guy. By the way, let me tell you one thing. Yes. Uh, we recently did corn dogs, like you get at the fair. Yes. And the biggest revelation out of everything was when I did a bratwurst as a corn dog. Yeah. Ooh. And I don't know why I've not seen that, but I'm telling you it is tremendous mm. and people should do it. Maybe people should embrace fair food for their July 4th. Get a whole theme corn. All right. Fair food. Go to the Cooking Guys corn YouTube dogs, channel, Corn Dog Elote. Navajo bread, fry bread. Yeah. Do giant turkey legs. Elote. Hot dogs and a lote, and you're, you're, you're good. Ready to go. All right. Uh, get all the recipes at his website, thecookingguy.com, or go watch them on YouTube. Find them here on the first Tuesday of every month. Sam, He's always so appreciate great. the Thanks, time. Man. You got it. There he is, Sam, the cooking guy. Gonzo Ooh. and pulling two segments. Great. I mean, always fun to talk to Sam, of course. Always fun to talk to Sam. Uh, let me talk to you quickly about cookingpellets.com, your number one source for quality wood pellets for all your pellet-driven cookers. You visit cookingpellets.com for more information and purchase. You can also visit amazon.com as well. Don't forget to download their free app, and we are hooking up CB sooner than later for a visit. We'll wrap the first hour. Stick around. Be right back. Big name interviews, advice on cooking brisket and ribs, and the only host willing to share his honest opinion on all things important in the world of barbecue. It's the Barbecue Central Show. All right, welcome back, and we thank Sam the Cooking Guy again for joining me the last couple segments talking about a 4th of July meal. Fair food is what he's suggesting now. Elote. I just like saying elote. Just like that, though. Not a lodi, a lodi, a loti, nothing that. A latte. You got to say it like that. From now on, if you're going to say street corn, you say a latte. Just like that. Everybody start calling in with their a latte type situation. All right, we're backing out. 
And getting ready for the second hour, don't forget Big Mo Kason will be joining us in the second hour. Your phone calls and emails. You're listening and watching the Barbecue Central Show right here on the Barbecue Central Network.